Reading with your kids. Hola, Nihao, Kunichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Muliwanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, an iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We're so delighted and so honored that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podchaser, Good Pods, Himalaya, Ghana, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is Sandra V. Feeder. She is here to celebrate her picture book, Angry Me. Before I invite Sandra into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by the books by Judy Weagle, Magical Words, Dandelion, and Lisa and Her Pajamas. Lisa in her pajamas is based on positive persistence and tolerance. Lisa shows positive resilience to the ridicule that she experiences from others based on her choice of clothes, showing that she has the capacity to self-regulate at an early age while respecting the rules created by her parents and the school. All three of these books are really wonderful stories that can spark some great conversations with your kids. Check them out today. The books by Judy Weagle. This episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is also brought to you by The Adventures of Rosie Posey Papillon. Friendship. It's book number one in a children's value series, and it's written by Dr. Diana Rangavis. She's smart. She's brave. She's friendly. Papillon is her last name. And in French, that means butterfly. The Rosie Posey series was created with young readers in mind to teach them values and to plant the seeds of future leadership and and, and to help create great thinkers. You and your kids are going to absolutely adore this. Rosie Posey Papillon by Dr. Diana Rangavis. Join us right now from right outside of San Francisco in the great state of California. Our guest today is here to celebrate a a beautiful and I think important picture book. It's called Angry Me. Please welcome to the show Sandra V. Theater. Hey, Sandra, how are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm I'm happy that you're not angry. I, I don't like dealing with angry people. I don't think many people do, which is part of the reason I wrote this book. Well, you know, I'm looking at my physical copy of Angry Me right now, and there is a young girl who is nothing but angry. That I mean, the anger comes – I would be hesitant to approach this young person. <laughs> yes. Um, the illustrator, Raheli Shamapur-Bell, did such a beautiful job of capturing I, – I like to – think she's sort of deliciously angry that she's got the hunched shoulders and the fists and um, she is just looking at you radiating some some anger for sure and I do think it's a a normal emotions that one of the the many that our kids cycle through yeah it seems so we've talked a little bit about it here on the podcast and and I've definitely shared that uh, my son that kid we 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 talk about all of us having this big, wide range of emotions. But it seemed like for my son, and I, for a lot of kids, there was happy, there was excited, and there was angry. And it was like everything that wasn't happy and excited got turned into anger. Is that something that you find with a lot of kids? Yeah, I, I think you, you uh, expressed that beautifully. And um, in the book... What I show is this angry little girl first glaring in the mirror and saying, I get angry. And then the book really is a series of um, situations in which a child might feel angry. And just as you're expressing, they don't have all the vocabulary even older children have or we as adults have. So some of the situations are things like getting your feelings hurt or um There's a situation that's played out in our house once in a while of the 
the child pointing and saying, you ate my cookie, and the dad saying, well, I didn't know you were saving it. Um, so all these little moments of a toy getting taken away or um, there's not being enough time for the activity the child wants to do or just feeling tired and frustrated, those are all moments that for very young children can come out more as anger. And as they grow and have more of a vocabulary, they might be able to use words to put to those situations. Yeah. But I think one of the things it's important for us as parents and grandparents and caregivers to remember is it, developing that vocabulary and developing that understanding doesn't, it's not like a switch gets turned on instinctually or automatically, we have to learn these things because I know an awful lot of adults in my life that they're happy, they're excited, and if there's anything other than those two, they're angry. And they don't have the words or the knowledge to differentiate. And so they're in, they seem to be in a constant state of anger. Yeah, and I think as a society, we haven't done a great job of um, – helping first our children and then ourselves learn to use words um, to diffuse or even other things to diffuse anger, but sort of socially acceptable things. And we all, I think, particularly lately, our society has veered toward anger just for adults being, um, I don't know, maybe too normalized in some ways. And I think uh, part of what I tried to do in the book is, again, show these situations where a little girl was angry. It's in first-person text, so she says, I get angry when, and describes these different types of anger. And then the second half in the book, I tried to parallel those exact situations with her trying to use her words. And um, I think this was important to me because, as you're saying, as a parent, we're trying to help our kids learn how to use words so they do know those words and techniques when they become adults and when the anger gets even bigger and um, in some cases understandable, but still needs an outlet. And in the book, the words work some of the time and some of the time they don't. And sometimes it's talking to a parent that helps. And I, I assume as an adult, you've experienced this. I certainly have that sometimes when I feel angry, it's talking it through with mm -hmm. somebody else or hearing another perspective on the situation that can help um, alleviate and release some of that. And um, my favorite part of this book is the very end when she uh, is scribbling these angry scrawls on a paper because I think art and getting that anger out is really important. Um, and then at the very final scene, she's sort of blissfully dripping paint with her body language all relaxed and happy. And um, I think, you know, as adults, we also have to find those releases. I do Taekwondo and I didn't really think I had much anger in me. I'm usually a pretty calm person. But boy, did I learn that yelling and um, learning to master those kicks was a great way to release stress and anger. Yeah. So I think as adults, we have to find what works for us um, in a way that isn't foisting our anger on other people. Yeah. And, and I, I, it is very important because a lot of people... You know, I was talking about the adults who grow up and they don't know how to, they don't have the vocabulary for expressing their anger. I think just as many adults grow up and they know they don't have the vocabulary to express the anger, but they know that they really can't be acting out on it. So they suppress a lot of that anger and that turns into a lot of health issues. It's really unhealthy to just kind of bottle up all those negative emotions inside of ourselves. Yeah, and it's really interesting that you said that. Um, somebody else said to me recently, and I thought this was absolutely true, and you're saying the same thing, and I didn't really think of it this way as much as adults, but I think it's very true that if you don't get the anger out or figure out how it works for you to deal with it, it turns inward. Mm -hmm. And that turning inward can cause health issues. It can cause mental health issues. Um, and I think we do need to 
recognize both for our kids and ourselves that um, anger is real and normal. I particularly wanted this story to be about a little girl because certainly when I was growing up, anger was not sort of an okay emotion for girls. Um, you were more uh, easily accepted in the realm of tears, of sadness. And so, you know, it was, as you were saying, you sort of had a, a smaller range of emotions that was yours to put out in the world. You happy, excited, or sad, but anger, not so much. Mm -hmm. And so I, it was important to me to say, yeah, girls get angry. Of course, women get angry. Um, and how are we going to start talking about this at a young age? And how does that carry forward into our own lives? It's interesting you say that that girls and women can become angry. I've been married to my beautiful wife for over 34 years. I've never, never seen her angry at all. Of course I not. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's you bring up something interesting that I don't think I've, I've talked about is what a silly kind of notion that we – that there are certain emotions that, that we feel that we, we've been told by society we're not supposed to feel. And I think that that's, just as, as you were speaking, I think that's crazy. Emotions happen. They're natural. They, you know, we can learn how to control and deal with them, but we can't keep them from coming. We can't keep them from f ourselves from feeling them. Certainly there are behaviors that we shouldn't engage in and, and, and whatnot, but emotions are, are a natural thing. Uh, we, we, we have to help our kids learn to accept that, that, that they're coming and, and to how to deal with them appropriately in, in, in a healthy way. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think, right, it is sort of a silly societal notion that, um, certain emotions are okay and others are not emotions are emotions and people are going to have them. So it's, what do you do with them and how do you as parents sort of both acknowledge and help your child through these. And, um, you know, part of the story for me is that anger can come and it can burst out and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. And then there's room for a new feeling and so that sort of acknowledging as we're talking about that, yes, this happens, people get angry, um, but it's neither the end of the world, nor does it have to be an emotion that stays with you for longer, maybe than it should. Yeah. And so yeah. learning again, those techniques for um, using words, there's a, a scene where the girl is playing with a toy and another child takes it away. And then the parallel at the later part of the book is she says, I wasn't, I wasn't done playing with that. Give it back, please. And that's a perfect example of using your words to try to resolve a situation. Does that always work? No, mm -hmm. but it's worth a try. Mm -hmm. And again, some of the things that do work is, is um, asking for help. She asks a parent for help with something that's been frustrating to her. Um, and the mother helps her learn that, these angry feelings are going to come. That's okay. And hopefully they're going to burst out and then be gone. So. Yeah. You shared with us why you chose to have a, a young girl as your main character. What was it that inspired you to write this book in the first place? Well, so I'm the mother of three daughters and um, one of those children had a much easier access to her anger than her sisters. Um, and so when said child was a toddler, uh, I sent her to her room for some infraction of household rules that, of course, I can't remember what the, the <laughs> issue was. But um, I said, you know, you need to, in my kind, but... I hoped firm motherly voice. You need to go to your room and think about what you did. And if that little girl didn't stick her hands on her hips and look right back at me and say, you think about it, mommy, you think about it. And I was a little bit like, Oh, okay. We are dealing with a, a little something different here. Mm -hmm. So, and I always say now, you know, there was a part of me in that moment that was like, you can't say that to your mother, which I told her. 
Um, and another part of me that was like, you go, <laughs> you know, way to stick up for yourself. <laughs> and um, soon thereafter, a very wise friend of mine, after a few more battles with this headstrong child, um, said the things that are hardest for us as parents are often our children's greatest strengths. Mm -hmm. And I really like that little bit of wisdom because I think there are things that we struggle with as parents. And certainly a, a temper is one of them mm -hmm. for a child. Um, and yet that kind of feistiness has served this uh, young woman very well in her life. And she not only knows how to stick up for herself, but I think that anger that came out at um, the unfairness that seems to be the world for children a lot, if you think about it, they don't have as many points of decision. They get taken places against their will. Um, they don't always pick the family activity. Um, those frustrations and, and seeing the world as a little bit unfair has just turned into this beautiful empathy for other people, for looking at the world and seeing what can I do to mm. make it better. It's it's interesting. It sounds like you you describing my daughter. <laughs> and and it's funny because as you were speaking and I was laughing to myself because I, I know my daughter did the same thing, the hands and the hips and the, the head shakes. And But my, my beautiful wife and I have very different recollections about that time. My wife will just say uh, she was just so difficult to deal with and she was always just miserable and angry. And I, and I don't remember her that way at all. I remember her as feisty, as strong, as... Yeah, you tell me what you want to do. I, I love that. And and again, like your daughter, um, my daughter is a fierce, absolutely fierce defender of folks who are uh, taken advantage of. And uh, I am, as we say here in Boston, I'm wicked proud of her. Yes, absolutely. And I love that. And they do sound like kindred spirits for <laughs> children. Um, absolutely. No, she uh, she definitely sticks up for herself and for other people. And, um, and you know, just that huge empathetic soul that sort of takes in the whole world. And um, I do think that all these emotions and waves of moving through the world are related. And us as parents, we sometimes think we're supposed to tamp down certain things, qualities. Um, and I think for me, it's less about tamping it down once I sort of could shift my mindset and say, what about this that, that is hard for me? And obviously it was sort of taming that or, or helping her figure out how to manage that. But um, not wanting to squash it, of course, because as, as I learned, it would prove to be a great strength of hers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I tell you, there's, there's probably nothing greater that a kid can do than stand up for one of their friends it's something that will last with that friend that you know i i know that my daughter has defended folks my my, my son has defended folks your daughter and i know that those people that they've stood up for they may not ever express it but they'll never forget the the courage it took for for our kids to stand up for them yeah absolutely yeah. I think that's a huge part of being uh, in society, in community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm imagining, and if with a lot of a lot of other picture books, it's like easy. Ah, I can see this family sitting down and having fun. Oh, look at this, and look at that, and I'm thinking that. It's be a slightly different experience sitting down and like, okay, and let's look at this. Let's, let's look at this angry, really angry little girl on the cover. How would you envision uh, that story time and those conversations to kind of kick off? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, well, there is a story to <laughs> this story. So I do, um, and in all my picture books, whether it's about anger or about bedtime or about having to move, um, I read the words aloud a lot mm -hmm. as I'm writing it. Because 
with a picture book, especially, you want it to be a read aloud. You want it to be a moment between a caregiver and a child. And um, part of why I tackle the issues I do in my books is that I think conversation between parents and children, grandparents and children, adults and children in general are really, really important. And so um, I think the illustrator did an amazing job of showing both the physicality of the anger in this child, as we've already talked about. And that really is true throughout the first part of the book. And then as the anger and she tries to find different ways of dealing with it in the second half of the book, you see her body language change. And and that even to me is a great conversation to have with a child of what does anger feel like? What does it feel like in your body? Because I do think that um, we are used to seeing um, some angry kinds of feelings, but it also can look different for different children Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the physicality of the anger the different situations. It was important to me that this angry child not exist on some not real life planet, but that the situations be true to life. So there's situations in the home, there's situations at school where she feels anger, there's situations out and about running errands with her mom, Um, all of these sort of real life situations where she experiences some anger and then tries to figure out um, how to deal with it yeah one of the things that flashed through my mind as you were answering that question that i didn't very eloquently state but um i was thinking one of the beauties of being a parent is not only that we get to teach our kids but we get to learn from our kids and i have a feeling that they're going to be some moments and some families and on some couch or on some bed where the parent doesn't necessarily say, oh, look, I remember you've looked like that in the past, but the child turning and saying, hey, mom, hey, dad, sometimes you look like that. Wow. Yeah, I think you're right. And I didn't really think of it that way, but I think you're absolutely right. And um, I hope that there will be some of those conversations because I think it's important that we as adults acknowledge our own emotions to our children and and start thinking about how do we manage that and how do we role model managing mm-hmm. yeah all yeah. our emotions yeah i again i think that that it's beautiful as parents we, we we do need to remember that as our kids are growing and as we're helping our kids grow we're growing too and that's yeah. okay yeah absolutely and i Again, with three children, I I sometimes think that my oldest daughter got a slightly different mother than my youngest child, Mm -hmm. and not intentionally Mm -hmm. in any way, but because I had grown as a person and I had grown as a parent. And so I think that is normal. And I one thing I try to role model from my girls is just continually growing and continually learning through making new friends all through life. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a student again in my life. Um, And those kinds of things, I think, are all parts of how we continue to grow. Yeah, yeah. So important. Well, you know, one of the things that's really important is for us to find out where we can go to find out more about Angry Me and find out more about you. Oh, thank you. Well, my website is my name, which is Sandra. I use my middle initial V as in Victor. And my last name is Feeder, F as in Frank, E, D as in David, E, R as in Robert. And so it's SandraVFeeder.com is my website. And the book is available, I hope, at your local independent bookstore, on Amazon, all the usual places. And um, there's also going to be a companion book called Peaceful Me coming out next year, which um, I figured I, I needed to try to tackle the opposite emotion of anger and thought a lot about it and decided that, um, as we talked about earlier in our conversation, that peacefulness is a place that we all would like to get to in our lives. Yeah, yeah. And when you do call your local, because we want to support our local and independent bookshops, when you call them, 
and you say, hey, do you have angry me? Don't get angry if they say no. Just ask very nicely and they'll make a phone call and they'll have it to you in a day or two. Exactly. They're happy, happy to order whatever you need. And yes, you can uh, use your words to ask nicely. (laughs) (laughs) We've had a great time speaking to the author of Angry Me, the very unangry and very peaceful Sandra V. Feeder. Hey, Sandra, thanks so much for spending time with us. Thanks so much. This was delightful. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Wilbur, Wilbur Forsett III. He'll be here to celebrate Vroom, Barry, Carrie, and the Power Boost. That's the next episode of the podcast. Hey, if you're the author of a fantastic children's book, you may be frustrated at how hard it is to let the world know all about your book. You probably had no idea when you published your book that there are over 2,000 books published every single month. I, I, I didn't mean year. Every single month, there are thousands of books published. It's really hard to stand out amongst that crowd. We can help you. The Reading With Your Kids podcast can help you celebrate your book to the world. You can be a guest here on the podcast. You can submit your book to our certified great read panel. You can take part in our monthly promotion program and have your book celebrated here in the podcast through commercials. You can have your book displayed on our nationwide network of digital pedestrian billboards. You can have us send out messages to our 90,000 plus social media followers. And you can learn how that can happen by visiting our website, Reading with your kids.com clicking on the author's click here button at the top of the page and scrolling on down to the various services want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful want to start by thanking our guest sandra v feeder please be sure to check out angry me also want to thank our sponsors the books by judy weagle especially lisa and her pajamas also want to thank Dr. Diana Rangaris, the author of Rosie Posey Papillon Friendship. My team deserves a big thank you. Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Ashley Contouris, Nicole Bel Castro. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.